Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a knife maker's center scribe. Now, grinding symmetrical bevels is really important in knife making. You want to have both sides of the blade be exactly the same. Not only does it look more refined and professional if you do this, but it diminishes the likelihood of warpage during heat treating. So when I'm grinding my blades, I always scribe a little line right down the center of the blade that allows me to make sure that I'm uh, grinding that blade symmetrically. Uh, I use this little scribe gizmo that I made a long, long time ago, and if you've watched a lot of my videos, you've probably seen it. Uh, every time I use it, I get a whole bunch of people send in comments or emailing me or whatever how do you make that scribe where do you get it where did you get it blah 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 so uh in this video we're gonna make that scribe and you can go on home make it yourself and then you'll have it for years this is a nice simple job something you can do in an afternoon all you'll need is a piece of square aluminum or brass stock roughly three quarters to an inch wide a quarter inch round could be brass aluminum steel whatever a broken 1 16th inch drill bit, and a threaded knob that you can buy down at Home Depot. This one's a quarter 20 thread, but that's just a random choice. You could use anything, really. We'll begin by cutting off a piece of aluminum stock. I'm using one inch here, but the original one that I made was 0.75 inches. The more important point is that it's at least a couple inches long, long enough to seat firmly across the width of any blade. Now I'm going to be using a manual mill here for a lot of these operations, but I could do any or all of these with much simpler tools. But there are some advantages in using a mill. Still, you can clean this up with a file. Having a really good vise makes milling and drilling operations easier. This old Kurt milling vise is built like a tank and is very precise, but for something like this, you can go with much simpler and cheaper vices. I'm using machinist parallels to raise the level of the stock and the vise and make sure that it's nice and square. If you don't own parallels, I highly recommend picking up a set of them. Now, good parallels are not that cheap, but if you're short on money, you can buy super cheap Chinese ones that work just fine for this sort of thing, or buy good ones used on eBay. Once you buy a set, you'll wonder how you ever got along without them. Once my ends are squared, I'll drill a couple of holes. I'm using an edge finder to pick up my edges and then setting the center of the stock as zero on my DRO. You could just as easily measure by hand and drill the whole thing freehand. This just makes it a little more accurate. When you want to drill something nice and square, it's always good practice to start the hole using a pilot drill of some sort. Now this is a combo pilot and countersink but there are all kinds of drills you can use for piloting a hole. The main point is that you want to use a very short rigid drill to establish the hole. Then you can turn to a longer twist drill and run it on through the work. If you just blast away with a long twist drill, you'll often end up with a hole that doesn't quite run true. The longer the hole, the bigger the problem. Next, I'll reset the stock, making sure it's nice and square before drilling. I'll drill a very short pilot hole, then use a number 7 drill, which is the recommended drill size for a quarter 20 thread. Now I could use a bottoming tap here, but instead I'll just run the hole a little bit deeper, actually all the way through the other hole that it needs to be seating into. That'll give plenty of clearance so that the tap will run the threads all the way to the base of the part of the hole that I need threaded. 
Now I'll tap the quarter 20 hole. One way of doing this is to run the tap down in the hole at a very slow speed on a mill. But as you can see, there are some disadvantages to this approach. The old fashioned way works just fine. Now, if you haven't done a lot of tapping, you'll see that I turn until I start to feel a little resistance, then I back the tap up enough to break the chip. This decreases the likelihood of breaking a tap. If you just keep cranking it and cranking it very frequently, you'll just break that tap. I also use tapping fluid whenever I'm drilling or tapping, which makes life easier on your cutting tools. Test it out, boom, done. All right, let me take a quick break here to mention something cool that we're doing uh, new on the channel. I'm gonna be posting plans for many of the builds that we uh, are doing uh, on Patreon. This is gonna be the first one. I'm gonna have a plan on there with all the dimensions and the materials used and so forth. You can jump on there and find out all you need to know to make this for yourself. The basic idea is that everybody who signs up for Patreon will be able to access them. Over time, the hope is that, you know, I'll accumulate a nice big stack of plans so you can come in and find plans for knives that I make, for shop tools, all kinds of cool stuff. It'll have all the dimensions, the materials used so that you can go back and kind of get a jump start on doing that project for yourself. I'm not going to limit this to certain levels of Patreons or patronage or whatever. Everybody who contributes to Patreon will have access. Um, and this project right here will be the first plan that I'll be posting on there. All right, let's get back to work. Next, I'll make what I'm calling the scribe carrier. Giving it a fancy sounding name makes it sound a lot cooler than just calling it a scribe rod thingy. I'm using bearing bronze here for a very complicated reason. I'm going to try and explain this and I hope you can stick with me because this is frankly pretty high IQ stuff. The reason I'm using this piece is it's the only quarter inch stock I could find in my shop without uh, looking very hard. I used aluminum in my original version of this tool, but look, anything will do. Anyway. This one's a hair above nominal so it won't fit in the hole, so I just take a couple thousandths off on my grinder using a worn out 400 grit belt. Now I'm using this real fine grit belt so as to barely remove any material at all. There. Next I cut it off about one and a half inches. I'll put it in the vise to mill off a flat, which will be used to seat the adjustment screw. One of the problems you often run into putting small items into a vise is that your parallels often don't come quite close enough to the lip of the vise to give a good hold and give some clearance for your mill. So I just use an Allen key to lift it up a little. Clamp it shut and I'm set. Always a good idea to pull your parallel out in situations like this so you don't blast your drill into it. Now I'll use a half inch end mill to bust off a flat in one go. Again, you don't need a mill, you could easily do this with a file. Now I'll drill a 1 16th inch hole for the scribe point. Finally, I'll take that piece of broken drill bit chuck it up in a battery powered hand drill and put a point on it on my belt grinder. If you really want to be fancy with this, you can buy carbide scribe replacement points and have a scribe that will last till the end of time, but this will do just fine. In this case, the fit of the scribe point is so tight in the hole that I'll be able to friction fit it. See, I'm just hammering it right in. But if yours comes out looser, you can lock tight it in, solder it, braze it in, whatever anything that'll hold it firmly. Assembly, it's just a matter of a few seconds. As you can see, the little thumb screw in the top allows you to slide the little scribe carrier back and forth in there so that you can adjust it for different thicknesses of stock. And that's about all there is to it. And now you're ready to get back to what is, after all, the point of this exercise, making knives. So I don't want to beat this Patreon thing to death, but I just do want to let you know that I will be giving away this little scribe. I'll be doing a drawing from everybody who signs up for Patreon during the month of July or August of 2017. So 
If you uh, feel moved to Patreonize the channel, uh, you might get a surprise gift in the mail in a month or two. All right, thanks again for watching and see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon.